That's the old stuff. The design team is going to collect the form information I just filled out and it's going to recommend products, which is really helpful. But you might wonder, how did I know everything I needed? Well, that wasn't an issue. Now, I didn't need to know every little rivet I needed, or the length of cabling, or even the length of the steel that they were going to send me. Now, these are kits. All I did was draw out with a measuring tape a simple crude drawing of what the project was. I just
In my quest to find the perfect diffuser channel, I stumbled across another product that I may even be more excited about. Enter the Musada Edgelit Frosted Acrylic Aluminum Panels. In this brief video, I'll unbox, set up, and show you a few more pictures and videos at the end. So each box comes with two panels that are each four feet in length. I'll slide the acrylic out of the profile so we can get a closer look at the design. Now the LED strip will slide in here and when the frosted diffuser sits on top, the light will illuminate the material and create a perfect glow throughout. This was exactly the modern touch to Next, you can remove the protective material that's on both now, sides of the acrylic. Now, take a real good look at the real narrow cable design. Now, that cable is thin and it disappears. For the LED strips, I'm going to be using some BTF lighting now, WS2812B pixels artist, that have 100 LEDs per meter. These lights work perfect and they're the ones I recommend like using for this product. To and to get the full visible, smooth neon look, it is recommended to use something that has at least 90 LEDs per meter, which is why I'm using these instead of my usual ones that only have 60. Now, since the panels are longer than the one meter length that the LED strips come in, I'm going to solder some together so everything matches. Now I like using my own 18 gauge silicone wires, so I'm going to be cutting off the first and last LED to get rid of the ones that they come with. So here's my finished strip. I soldered my own wires to the front and back as well as added about 21 additional LEDs. I won't go over step by step on that process since I already made a how to solder video that you can watch that walks you through in great detail on what I just did. Now that our strip is ready, you can insert it into the channel at the bottom and feed it through to the end. In the interior space, it's very modern. It makes the flow. Once the strip is in, you may be wondering how to get the adhesive off the back to make it stick. While it is possible to do, I recommend just leaving it on. The end results all look the same, and in my opinion, it's just not worth it. Now all that's left to do is slide the diffuser in place. One thing I do want to mention is if you end up installing these somewhere that's going to typically be below eye level, make sure you flip the panels around from what you're seeing here so that the LEDs are on top shining down. And if you put them somewhere that will typically be above your eye level, have the LEDs at the bottom shining up like they're positioned now. As far as controlling the lights and getting everything hooked up, I'll be using WLED installed on an ESP32 board. I'll leave links in the description to a couple of videos I previously made going over step by step how I get everything set up and connected in case you want to do it the same way. Now as you can see here, I did end up putting together a few more of these in the exact same way to have a little more fun when testing them out. So as far as I can tell, there's currently nothing else like this on Amazon, and even though they're advertised as a baseboard trim product, my mind is already thinking the endless ways I can incorporate them into future projects. Please let me know if you have any questions at all, and I hope you enjoy the final pictures and videos. They give a $15 discount. I'm Rebecca Brand. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you subscribe to my channel, ring the bell to get notified of my next video, and let's keep making great recipes and lives. And today's the recipe for a whole living room makeover with the crowning glory, my beautiful new railing from Posada. See you next time. Time for me to have a dinner party. In the last few years, RGB floor lamps have exploded onto the scene, and I know there's already a ton of DIY videos out there, but I still really wanted to try coming up with something myself. And since I want to be able to shine the light at the wall, as well as at times have it face me, I'm going to go with the design that more closely resembles the smaller profile base of the popular Govi Lyra versus the traditional V-shape that you've probably seen a lot of videos on already. So the first thing I had to decide on was what to use for a diffuser, and I ended up going with this V-channel from Musada. This one is 1 meter in length, but since you can also get this in 2 meter sections, I'll for sure be doing this project again once I get my hands on that size. Next, I had to come up with something for the base, and I ended up using 1 and a quarter inch square dolls that I'll be cutting into different lengths. Now as you can see, these pieces of wood are about the exact same size as the profiles, which is going to be perfect for getting everything so secured and set up. Project. So right but now, I've already cut some of the squares into a few different lengths, and I'm just experimenting on different ways I might want to put them. And once I have a design that I like, I'm going to secure the pieces of wood together using just a little bit of your average wood glue. I'm going to run over to the post office real quick, pick that up, and come along. Here I'm going to take the diffuser and just line it up on top of one of the squares and make a mark at about a quarter of an inch bigger than where the line would be if I were tracing it. Next I'll be adjusting my blade to 45 degrees and cutting off the corner section where the mark was made. And since this cut won't be visible when installed, you don't need it to look perfect so you could very well go slow and just use a regular hand saw if you'd like. Now that the three blocks have dried, it's time to get the aluminum diffuser added. And based on how tall you want the lamp to be, we'll determine where it gets secured. To attach the profile to the wood, all I'm going to be using is some super glue. And once applied, I just held things firmly in place for about one minute, and then I let things set for about an hour. 
So now I'm going to take that one piece of wood that we cut the corner off and butt it up right next to the bottom of the channel. I do want this piece of wood shorter than the other ones because this is where I'll eventually feed the wires out of. And hopefully you can see here that the gap in the wood should be just big enough so that the wires from the LED strip will be able to fit through. Now honestly, at this point, the profile will stay upright and you could be done with it if you wanted to. However, I'm going to add a few more blocks of wood to give it a little bit sturdier of a base and a little bit more character. And I really had to fight the urge to get carried away, but I was proud of myself and only added three more pieces. It's here! <laughs> For the lights, I'm going to be using some BTF SK6812 LEDs since these will have the individually addressable pixels that I want as well as a separate LED just for the whites. I've already soldered my own 18 gauge silicone wires to the strip and I won't go over that process since I already made a how to solder video that goes over the easy steps of what I just did with very close up footage and commentary that I highly recommend checking out if you're interested. And you certainly don't have to, but I'm going to use a little heat shrink tube to cover up the soldering points at the strip and to give the wires a little more reinforcement. So the next thing I'm going to do is look at the bottom of the base and I want to determine where the best spot might be for the wires to come out. And I'm going to make a few marks for potential places I think might be best, but I won't be doing anything further at the moment. I'm also going to use this mesh type cord concealer to tidy up the wires from the LED strip. I probably should have gone with a little bit bigger size, but they'll still do the trick. Now after giving it some thought, I think this little area right here is where I'm going to have the wires come out from under the base. And I didn't record this part, but I just used a little sander attached to a Dremel rotary tool to make the little groove. But you just as easily could have used a little saw or chisel for this step. Here I'm going to be feeding the wires through the little slot in the wood at the bottom of the diffuser. On both sides. And once that's done, I'll be removing the sticky tape and securing the LED strip and under the aluminum profile. And in case you're wondering, there are 60 LEDs on this strip. Something that looks more long now the last thing to do before going over power and controller is to attach the milky white diffuser cover to the profile. Now right here, it's a little hard to see, but this is where I use the little sander to make a small groove in the wood so that when this thing's sitting on the floor or hard surface that the wire can come out but the base will still be flush with the surface. For power, I'm going to use a 5 volt 10 amp supply, and I've already cut off the barrel plug at the end and exposed the positive and negative wires. And since there's not much room to work, I'm going to use an inline Wago connector to extend the wires a little bit so it's not so cluttered. They like to say that these come out very easily, but they do not. As far as controlling the lights, I'm using my standard WLED installed on the ESP32 board. I won't go over those steps since I already made a simple walkthrough video on how to get that installed that you can watch, and in the already mentioned soldering video, I go over how to attach the wires to the module like I have here. Next is the easy part. I'm using a 5-piece Wago connector and I'll be inserting the red voltage wire from the power source and the red voltage wire from the LED strip into two of the five openings. Then I'll use another 5-piece connector and do the same thing for the two black negative wires. Now I'm just going to plug awesome. the red voltage wire from the ESP device into one of the remaining wow. three slots in the connector, so and then I'll do the same for the white ground wire, which will go into one of the three open <laughs> slots that have the yeah, black wires in. Yeah, and finally, I'm using a three-section Wago connector to put the green data lines together. So the reason I use Wago clips with more openings than needed is now if I want to make a second floor lamp, which I did, all I have to do is put the three wires from that LED strip into the appropriate remaining openings and I'll be good to go. So that about does it for this project. I hope you enjoy the final pictures and videos, and as always, let me know if you have any questions at all. Lifex, I love Philips. You are Lifex Z. If someone dance, I have Philips. We both been doing them. And they've been the single most reliable mobile I've ever used. But at that price, boy, I bet you hear somebody in the past say, hey, cheaper is not always better. But, boy, if it is, hmm.
Might be saving some money after this video. Cheaper, might be better. So we're gonna try to use everything we have in this box to create a custom LED strip that we can use on the bottom of these covers right here so we have some nice underglow. Now we get started, I don't even know why I do it, I just followed a bunch of tutorials here so they can feel free to follow along with me. I'll leave everything below in the description. Now we get started. So the thing is, if you're about to use this as one long continuous strip, you're definitely not gonna need as much things as I have here right now, but I wanna cut them up and make sure they fit under the covers. Exact now, boys. So I definitely need a few more things. First things first, power supply. You need this one, not option. Hey, 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 a 20 pack of these connectors to connect the strip to the wires. I, I, I guess it's optional. I like the skin on my fingers. I don't want to burn them off trying to solder this, but I guess it's up to you. I, uh, uh, yeah. The strip itself, the SK68, well, don't worry about the name, everything in the description. I personally went with it all. It's a little more expensive than the others because you have an individual LED for the white colors, which is some I needed because it's in the kitchen already. All right, white to round white to you. Accurate, no boy, but I'll leave Somebody's the the sun shades on. It's actually coming around a 5 meter, so more than likely you're gonna have some extra left over for our next project. Hopefully. This little thing you have along me again, ESP8266. You don't need to know what that means, you just need to know that it's very cheap. One of these is somewhere between 5 to 7 dollars, and it's gonna be the brains of the entire operation. And finally, some wire to wire. The whole thing now listen to the dual boom down your house. I personally went with this 22 gauge wire. I, it worked for me, I have zero issues, no complaints, and especially because it comes with this roller white, I'll just leave fast to explain why. Kitchen a white so it can be a little lazy with the wire management if it might be nice. Gonna move on to appearance place and buy this measuring tape because it seems like a pretty good thing to do. Put, your, put off the end of the LEDs, just make sure you cut it on one of the actual cut holes. Now that we have the first like LEDs cut to side, nah, I figure it's a good time to tell you about the directional arrows on the LEDs. However, you decide to cut these up and join oh, no. them back, you just need to make sure the arrows oh, remain oh, following the same direction. When you jump in the car, you don't put it in drive to reverse and reverse to drive hey. forward back. Just make sure to follow the same direction. In Connect the LEDs to the wires with the little clips. Here, it's real easy to use. Just push the LED in one side, squeeze it very hard, push the wires in the other side, squeeze it very hard. Done. I just tried to put the software on this little chip thing. I know it's looking confusing. It kinda is, but it also not at the same time. Just just follow along and you'll be good. Plug it into your computer with a micro USB cable. Open your browser and go to install.wled.me. You'll be greeted with this page right here. Connect. It's install WLED. Come up, click that right there. Boom. Install. And now it's flashing. You could officially call yourself a nerd now, boys. And that is it. Literally, it done. That was all the steps. Connect it to your Wi-Fi when this box pop up. I know you can't see anything that's going on on my screen, but I promise you that simple. Now, a quick little test we could do to make sure everything's working. We get this power button right here, and you can see this LED turn off. Hit the power button again, and it's on. Now we just need to connect the rest of LEDs to this. But before we do that, we have three wires, positive, negative, and data. And Jackie's gonna be your best friend here because we're using white wires. I'm just gonna put a mark on the positive and a mark on the data. And well, the, the black one is the ground. Cut, cut the other end that we're gonna connect to the little chip and do the same exact thing. I'll find these little breadboard wire and things over here. Just call them lying around. Actually, should I mention this in the beginning? I'll leave it linked as well, but it'll make it real easy to connect things to the chip. Connect the power to the pin label VIN. We're like, oh, we did one side, we can do that other side in about an hour. Let's just yeah, let's make it go a lot faster. Alright, I'm doing the judgment right now. I connect it like this just to test everything once it's working and secure it properly. Plug it in and boom, light. Except right, let's fuck with that. Yes, we're fixing that now. Hit on. this config Bye. button, hit LED preferences, scroll down to where you see LED output and choose the LEDs that you have here. This is where I'll put SK6812. If you choose the other one, this is where you'll put it here as well. Right below that, you'll see a box label length. Take out the default value, put the amount of LEDs on your strip. Yes, you need to count the exact dots on your strip and, and put it in there. I want to hit save. If everything went according to plan, you should be in a game. If it didn't, I, I don't know what to tell you there, boy. <laughs> now nah, leave a comment. I got, I got try my best. At this point, if you didn't cut the LEDs, you're done. You can just use it as is. But I about to put up the first segment here and then I'll cut the rest for the rest of the cupboards. Here the problem though. If I just stick this under the cupboards, look at how they're looking. Agreed. That game is so angry dog, I had to take a break and go and unbox the new sword. <laughs> That's not a sword boy bro, that's actually from the sponsor of this video, Muzata. This is gonna allow me to put the LEDs in these little channels, then put the diffuser over it, so it'll literally soften the look of the LED and just make it look polished smooth and just just good to look at this is what the leds will look like with all the hot spots like we don't want that but as i slide on the cover for the diffuser you can see just how much of a difference it makes. the exact set i have here is a six pack of these new shape channels they're made of aluminum each one is 3.3 feet in length super good quality i couldn't recommend it anymore it's really and truly a game changer for any LED project and if you happen to be watching this video thinking to yourself you know what 
you have to check it out below. Well, Muzata thought ahead. He linked below in the description. I'll give you 10% right. off the normal price. Walking into a so new Muzata, project. Muzata, appreciate all your sponsor in this video. Honestly, can't go away because we don't know what it will look like without it. So, so soon finish. And we got Second one. So yes, this is literally like how I keep a count of every LED I was adding. Don't you just love the wiring? Honestly, just look how much more of a finished product that's looking like home. Connect it to the first strip. Jump into the LED settings. And of course, remove the number that you had before. And put the correct number. Which is luck. Having the entire strip. Save, and once everything went according to plan, you should be in a game. If not, <laughs> and just like that, the first half of the kitchen done. It only take two days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, watch me just ignore the measuring tape. I was raving about just the eyeball, this is why you're here. <laughs> I thought everything was going good until tragedy hit. Alright, so we run into a small problem, boy dog. Um, I thought I could have run this through the cupboard because I thought I had a crack there with a lemon push it through and hide it but now working so we just gonna run it with the wires visible for now and we'll figure out that wire management thing after all right so right here is where things get a little sticky because under here we don't have much space now so i need to cut a piece of the diffuser a short piece but also measure and make sure i leave space for the clips because they can't fit inside the hmm. better care this ignore the measuring tape this time <laughs> I just add in some paint and stick on the actual the point of the cut. I, I don't know why, I just feel like it will make sense. We're going to do the second coat and then we're going to paint the beam across the top. It's going to really frame out the space. I'm excited. What the fuck? I've been wanting to do it since we moved in here. <laughs> Just wait until we have to bring out that. Don't letter. forget once we add the LEDs, we uh, need to replace the length of the new number. Hit save and then you slap on the so diffuser covers and watch them LED heavy, hotspots disappear. And now we just have one final so step on we done. So up until now we've been powering it through the microwave from the laptop. It's time to wire the power supply in. It's simple and not difficult at all. So remember where you connect the positive and negative and data to the actual LEDs from the chip. You're just gonna take the positive and negative from the power supply and splice it into that same positive and negative cable. And you're done. Once the power supply plugged in, you can now remove the micro USB cable and it powered directly from the wall. And we have access to a lot more power now. So in the settings where you see it saying the maximum current is 850 milliamps, we wanna change that to 2000. I have a power supply that could do way more, but we just playing it safe for now. 2000, hit save and you should see the LEDs right now. So at the time I edit in this video, I've been using the lights for about 2-3 to three weeks. I have zero complaints, zero issues. It looks just the same as a LifeX strip, as a Philips Hue strip, maybe even better, maybe even brighter. The whites super bright, accurate, the colors saturated. And on top of that, as you can see for yourself when I change the colors or turn it on and off, it have a nice smooth fade which you do get from most other LED strips which is right, so it, it's something that's super necessary to me so I'm just gonna stop talking now I gotta chill I'm gonna just really watch some of the and effects that you can do you and you can here, judge for yourself if it's better than Philips Hue and LifeX by a fraction of course to me that's gonna be the 100%. Hello guys and welcome back to KMX Petra. Today we're going to be reviewing and installing the Mazada Silver LED Channel System. When paired with a high density LED light strip, this channel can uh, produce a spotless effect. The channel system has lots of applications and there's plenty of places where you could install it. For us today we're going to be installing it underneath our bar countertop. The last few weeks since we moved in, we've really been uh, renovating this bar area, trying to get it to look better. It was a we started by staining the bar, dead. and then we added oh, a yeah, cool 3D scars, brick everything. on the back oh, wall. And now next up, we're sweating. adding this my light strip underneath the bar, ladder. which I think will add a lot to it. the uh, area. To Todd for getting on. If you did I want to install it outside, the system is waterproof, but for us, it's just going to be underneath the bar. So nothing to worry about there. And like I mentioned before, you will want to use a high density light strip to achieve that spotless uh, neon almost effect, which I think will look really cool when it's done. It has a set of brackets that you screw into wherever you want the channel system to be. And then the channel system itself just snaps into these brackets. 
and then over that you put the diffuser so it's easy to put a light strip in and replace it even down the line. For our application we also had a set of corner brackets and corner uh, channel pieces that came together and it makes it real easy to hide where the light strip kind of bends around the corner and these uh, snap in perfectly so once it's installed it looks perfect. So like I mentioned before we decided to put these underneath our bar countertop but there are plenty of places you could put them like cabinets, wardrobes, mirrors, anywhere really and we're kind of thinking about where else we would want to have this effect in our house because Muzada did send a, a few extra channels to us to use. So definitely big thank you to Mazada for sponsoring this video and this DIY project that we have here. So yeah, if you're looking for a cool gift this holiday, maybe the Mazada channel system is something you'd want to consider if you're trying to spice up someone's game room or bar or whatever really. For those interested, we'll have a link down in our description, which will take you directly to the Mazada site where you can browse all their different channel systems available. They do provide various length of channel, so whatever your application is, I'm sure they have it. As always, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope that the application was interesting to watch at least. Uh, yeah, so. If you're see seeing the see end result time. now, you can let me know what you think. I think it came out really cool. We're excited to have a few different lighting effects in our bar game room area. And eventually, uh, the plan is to add a cool drop-down projector in that corner. So, lots of cool content to come with that. Definitely keep an eye on the channel. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe so you don't miss our next video. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and have a good day. Bye. In today's video, I'll go over how you can easily add some LED lights to transform your space from this to this without having to do any programming, splicing wires, soldering, or even putting any holes in your wall. So to start things out, I'll be using a couple products from Govi. The first one, which I have here, is their updated version of the M1 that supports Matter out of the box. This is a big deal for those that like to use different smart home applications. The Matter protocol has become the universal language that most smart home programs are adopting, so compatibility with what you're using in these lights should not be an issue. Now, I'll also be using a couple rolls of their original M1 that doesn't support Matter out of the box, but I do have an important update on this that I'll share at the end of the video, so make sure to stick around for that. The first thing I'll have to do is take down some of my previous projects to make room for this one and because I'm always changing things up I've gotten so really good at making things as easy and non-destructive as possible to remove. To this, I'll leave links in the description to the videos I made for this DIY diffuser channel, the DIY corner floor lamp, and the silicone neon tubing that's over on the left hand side in case you're interested in checking those out. It wasn't too bad. Repeat this process on both sides and perform touch-up work as needed. And before actually now, you could always just put the LED strips directly on your wall, but I personally think things look so much better when you're able to diffuse the lights to achieve so a perfect point, and evenly lit neon glow. Railing, to achieve this effect, I'll be using some diffuser color channels color that I came across a while ago that would be perfect for this install. So this next step is completely optional, since you could just butt two of these up against each other to make the corner turn here, but to give things a slightly more professional feel, I'll be cutting these at a 45 degree angle so that they'll line up flush with each other. I have done this many times before and I do recommend wrapping the part that will be cut with some painter's tape. Now you could just use a fine tooth hand saw for this cut, but if you have the tools you might as well use them, so I'll be using my miter saw for this step. I'll be adjusting things to a 45 degree angle and then making the cut. You want your post to be in a straight line, it's as simple as that. Next, preliminarily place your railing post on the concrete and mark the anchor bolt locations, which will typically be And hopefully it comes across on camera, but you can see that they do line up nearly perfect next to each other, which is gonna allow the LED strip to travel from one wall to the next with no visible gap in light. Now before moving on, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Aura. So this is me signing up for their free 14-day trial, and during the setup process, one of the many things they do is scan the internet for data brokers that have your personal information. These data brokers then make a fortune selling your information to spammers, scammers, and other entities that want to know more about you. Now, Aura was able to find 30 such instances of my personal information being in the hands of these companies. Then, with one click, Aura sends out a notice to have my information removed from their systems, which they are legally required to do when asked. Their all-in-one platform offers antivirus protection, credit monitoring, credit lock, financial transaction alerts, secure VPN, identity protection, parental controls, 24-7 US-based customer service, and much, much more. I'll leave a link in the description for you to start your own free 14 
14-day trial, so please make sure to check them out. Thank you all so much, and now back to the video. So once you have a design in mind, it's time to start attaching the profiles to the wall. I've only had great experiences using these removable 3M sticky pads for this step, and it's pretty much the only thing that I use now when putting up channels. Now you certainly could use the clips that the product comes with and drill things directly into your wall, but at least for me, I much prefer this option. Now this will obviously vary depending on your layout, but here's what I had in mind. I'm going to use the original M1 that's 5 meters in length, and that's going to run directly on top of the baseboard and then make the right turn and go behind the media console. This should use up the entire 5 meters for that strip. Then I'll attach another 5 meter M1 about a foot above the first one and have it run 2 meters on either side of the wall. And for this one, I definitely could use the entire strip, but for the look I had in mind, I'm only going to use 4 of the 5 meters, so I'll be cutting out the last part. And finally, I'll be using the updated M1 that supports matter and installing it above the second strip over here. And since the new M1 strip is 2 meters long, it should fit perfectly in one of the 2 meter length diffuser channels. After confirming that the post is level, you're going to now fully tighten your nuts, and you want to do this gradually. Don't tighten one all the way down and then go to the next. Just kind of go uniformly. And then trim off any of the excess shim using a utility knife to score along the post, and then snap off the excess. Repeat the railing post installation process for all of the rest of the posts needed for your project. Now, if you haven't done so already, you now, can remove the milky white diffuser top so that we can begin installing the LED high. strips. You can use a so before putting the lights into the channels, you want to make sure you have an idea of where you're going to plug things in and plan accordingly. For example, this part of the LED strip where the pins are sticking out is the beginning and where the controller and power will get attached, so I'm going to make sure that this will end up over here. install the decorative post base cap like you're seeing. Do this for all the posts. Moving on to the next one, and this is where I'm only going to have the 4 next meter up, length. So at the, the end, I'll just be cutting out the this, leftover section at one of the cut points, and make sure your lights are not plugged post, in during this step. The video description for the exact name of all of this hardware. I'll have it linked down and finally, the last the long section, and this one's going to be pretty easy since it'll be using the entire 5 meters. Next, I'm going to go ahead and reattach all the diffuser covers. And we're going to go ahead and preliminarily get it installed there with the provided hardware. Now, it's finally time to install the railing, and to do this, Now we can just start attaching the controllers and power and sources to the LED strips. In place while I got everything lined up and measured. So for my now I have rarely ever gone through the extra work of feeding wires in the walls. Instead, I usually just hide visible wires using some basic cable concealers. Here I'll cut out a small notch at the top and then use some painter's tape to attach. It's not perfect, but again, unless you want to go behind the walls, it's about as good as you can get and definitely good enough for me. But let's say you don't have a media console or really anything else to help conceal things. I made a video recently on something you could do that looks better than just putting things on the open floor in a pile that you can check out if interested. So now that everything's officially set up, all we have to do is wait for nightfall to see how things turned out. Now right off the bat, I absolutely love how this looks with the different heights and staggered lengths. It completely transforms the feel of the room into something different and unique, and that's exactly what I was going for. So right now I'm going to open up the Govi app, and I already have the three strips connected and named bottom, middle, and top. And I know very recently there was a software update made available for the original M1 that's supposed to drastically improve the white level performance as well as adding a new DIY sound react option. And since the middle and bottom strips are both the original M1s, I'm going to first update only the bottom to see if I can really tell a difference in the accuracy of the whites. So right now I have the bottom strip on full brightness and the white slider is all the way to the right. And I'm not sure how well this will come across on camera, but without yet comparing it to the middle strip, to the naked eye, it actually looks really good. Next, I'm going to go into the non Non-updated middle strip and change that to white to see if we can tell a difference when comparing the two. So without a doubt, I can clearly tell there's a difference, but what do you all think? To me, the middle strip has a slight but noticeable purple tint to the white color while the bottom strip definitely looks more accurate. I also tried moving the sliders all the way to the left for the warm white option, and at least from what I'm seeing, I really can't tell a difference between the two in this scenario. Now the next thing I want to quickly go over, since we do have three controllers and having to go into each one to make a change is not always what you're going to want to do. Instead, we can easily set these three up in a group to allow us to change all the lights at once. For this, go into the home tab on the top left of your screen, scroll down to groups, and then hit the plus icon. Then click same model group control, give things a name, and then add all three LED strips. You can now simultaneously make changes to all the lights versus having to do it one at a time. Follow the manufacturer's instructions and then use the provided hardware to actually fasten the railing to the post below. Repeat this for all the posts and then tighten everything up permanently. To install the railing end caps, I recommend you use some construction adhesive. Moving on to the music stay updates, and Govia has always done a great so job in the, the sound the react category, but they've expanded the on the functionality and have added a DIY mode. I played around with this for a little bit, and there's definitely so many ways you can tweak the animations to create something you love, which you can then save to access later, so make sure to check this out. Follow along as best you can, but refer to their additional resources if you need it.
So I pre-cut all of my cable, I measured the distance between the posts and added about one inch just to give myself a little cushion. And as you can see, this vinyl wrap cable doesn't fit within the hardware, so you're going to have to trim off the last bit of segment with the utility knife. Now as far as getting things time, connected with Matter, it's pretty straightforward. Jacketing, I'll be using my Echo Dot 5th Gen, which is one of the many devices that currently supports the protocol. First, go into your Alexa app, and then on the Devices tab, near the top right, click the plus icon. Then scroll all the way down to Other, and then choose Matter. It'll then ask you to scan the QR code, which can be found attached to the Govi controller right here. Once scanned, it'll have you connect to your home Wi-Fi, assign it to a room, and then you're good to go. Now the instructions do say to set up Matter within the first 15 minutes of turning things on for the first time, and if it doesn't connect, you'll want to reset the Govi controller by holding the power button in for 4 seconds, and then hitting the button below it 4 times, which will do a factory reset and allow you to try pairing again. Now one last thing I did want to mention is that if you did purchase the original Govi M1, and now you're a little bit bummed that it doesn't support Matter, Govi said that via their website or app you'll be able to provide proof of purchase, and they'll send out a free replacement controller for the original M1 that does support Matter. And I'm not entirely sure on the exact details details of the promotion or how long it'll last, but hopefully it'll be an easy process to get the upgrade sent out. So that about does it for this video, but I'll leave you with some final pictures and videos of the setup in action for those of you who'd like to see a little bit more. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I hope you have a blessed day. All you need to do is repeat this process for all of the cable involved in your project. If you've done this, it's going to take you a few hours, but it's really not too bad. Lastly, if you remember those adhesive sleeves, now you're going to peel off the paper and you're going to stick it to the post and that's going to cover up. Hey guys, welcome back to the Project DIY channel. On today's project, we're going to be adding some lighting to our kitchen cabinets. Let's get started. How it's held up in the element, some mistakes I made installing them and repairs I've had. So I'm going to be adding some lighting to our kitchen cabinets. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put some lights up on top. Uh, to shine up on the ceiling. This is more of an accent light. And then I have some LED lights I'm going to put down underneath of the cabinet and that will be more for utility for being able to see what you're doing on the counter. There's a lot of We've got the uh, parts laid out here on the table that I'm going to be using. Different options from We've got all over the place. LED strip Amazon lights, and, the and these are going to be the under cabinet lights, and it's not the those cheapest, have the remote controls. And it's a really good they also product. have a sensor fun. that will um, turn the lights on and off on when it's... Uh, turn them on when it's dark, turn them off when it gets light, and also they will do motion sensing, so if you walk into the kitchen, the lights automatically turn on. Uh, these are just some generic lights that I'm, I'm going to be using up on top of the um, cabinets just for an effect. I've already got one of those installed up above the refrigerator. And then I you can, can see it just kind of shines out over the ceiling. The and lastly, the I have these uh, covers the for these strip so lights and uh, place, these are made by a company called Musada. Uh, they are uh, aluminum they can be bent uh, however you want to bend them if they need to go around something they also have a flexible cover that disperses the light from the LEDs so as you know these LED strips are rather ugly and I don't think uh, I would want those just hanging around under the bottom of my cabinets by themselves because number one uh, they're ugly and number two the individual lights 
uh, create hot spots. When you look at them, you just see single lights. And what I hope to do with uh, these Mazada uh, channels, is what they call them, is to kind of disperse that light so that it kind of glows a little more rather than it's being so harsh. So these channels are very useful. And uh, if you're going to put up strip LED lights, uh, you need these code, to make them look good. So I want to thank Mazada for providing these channels. And uh, like these things are pretty cool. So these lights will all have to be plugged in. And uh, I want to hide all that inside of the cabinet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside of here and I'm going to put in an outlet so that I can plug both the lights from the bottom and the lights from the top into that outlet. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole in the back. And if you look right down below here, so there's that outlet, and there's the cabinet. What I'm going to do is fish a uh, cable from the bottom down here up into here, set the outlet in there, and that'll give us a place to plug those lights up. So you guys have seen me install plugs before. Uh, if not, I'll leave a link to a video right here where I've done it. So I'm not going to spend much time on it. I'll just go ahead and get these installed, and then I'll come back whenever we get done with that. Sophisticated and a little more expensive. So behind our deck here is our actual house. It's our full barn house that we've been finishing the inside of for a very long time now. But inside, we actually have an open air loft where we put the exact same cable. And just like we focused on the outside with the spacing of three inches, we did the same thing inside. changed out. Now, I don't know if you can tell from the video, but our house has these weird plugs. It is a double wide mobile home, so maybe that's a thing for double wides. I don't know, but anytime I take a plug out, I always put back in a standard plug. I just think those are uh, more normal. So anyway, I also got this plug in. Got a hole drilled up through my cabinet. Now after about 18 through there, even though steel it comes out a bit, and maybe the top the right there. So, so now I'm going to hook this or so, light up and set it up here so we can have some light coming up from the top of the cabinet. Have any spots where you get more than 40 in between your railing sets to make sure your back code is safe. Really all it took for me was a couple of rotations with the wrench to make sure it's tight again and it's been holding your ever since. 
So all this time later, we're definitely still big fans of the cable railing, especially the product that Mizada makes. That sounds a little bit like a commercial, and they did ask us to kind of put up more information on their products. But seriously, it's worked out great. And there's still a lot of people commenting on that old video that we put out way over a year ago now. So if you have any questions about your cable railing project, if you're just looking into it for the very first time, let us know, give us a comment down below, ask any questions you have, and I'll try to answer those questions to the best of my ability, trying to help you guys out get your cable railing going at your place. Make sure you check out the link below to Mazada. They've got a lot of great information on their website. You can see all the hardware and cables that they offer. And remember I talked before about how right, they there have we go. design service available. Accident so lining up on top of that. And they can help cabin. you design your next cable railing. Now for the LEDs. We have at least one all right, here's how these big LEDs deck work. Give so. the plug. We plan on using the same Mazada deck plugs into the back system. of a sensor. Make that deck as beautiful as this and then appreciate you guys watching the LEDs this video. We'll themselves on the next also one. plug into the sensor. <clears throat> out here on the end of the LEDs to focus there's also a plug and then these LEDs on this row are in segments that will plug into those so you can Customize the length on these. Also, you can cut these. Good morning, and welcome back uh, to our property up here in Southern Utah. Uh, it's been a few days since we picked up the camera. We have been working away on this ones. deck, trying to stay warm. So first thing I'm going to do really do good. We're all the way past the door now. We've got a little bit where left to do before this side is completed. This then we can start this on the railing on this side and get this allow side these to come on and off. And then we'll continue over to that side. But that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Muzada. They sent us over all the railing cables for our deck. I'm excited. To do that because I that. like I'm the cable thinking. railing system. It doesn't like block the view the out of the deck. We have awesome views, so like having that. these little cables saves the view. Anyway, and it's I'll cold. It's time to the let the tools the warm me up right so I'm gonna get to work. Plug that in. Oh, is that the way this one is uh, over here? And then this end will go into the LEDs. And from here all the way across, I'm gonna put those Mozada channels and put the LEDs inside of that and then they'll plug into this Beautiful, situation also. This also comes with double-sided tape and some extensions to go between the LED segments if you need a segment without any light. Alright, got this sensor mounted, hole in the back, and now I've got my cable coming down here that's going to my LEDs. Real quick, turn those on so you can see what they look like. All right, next I'm gonna cut my channel all the way across and take two pieces and I'm gonna mount that. And I'm gonna use uh, some double-sided tape. All right, this channel and the covers are thin enough that you can easily Cut this beside that. May have to straighten out the ends where you cut it just a little bit, uh, but it's no big deal at all. starting to shake a little bit. Really? There's ice on the wood. That is brand new. I know. That just barely happened. We have icicles on our house right now. It's taking a lot longer than I want it to because now that we have a railing here and a post here and a post there, I only get like two or three boards before I have to measure and cut and cut three, four times to get it to fit right. We only got 10 feet left, 20 more boards, roughly. It's just slow. Now I gotta put it on our post right there. And it's cold, like it's windy, it's cold. We're on, like the sun's on that side, the whole thing's shaded over here, which makes me think that as soon as this thing sloughs off, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a mess. It's gonna be a snow blower. No, 
of these aren't the best conditions to put this butyl tape down. There's like a little bit of ice and snow, but it's sticking in some places and some places it's not. But I'm hoping that once it dries, it'll stick. And then once we put the decking on there, we're screwing it down anyway, so it's not going anywhere. I have a feeling I'm gonna get comments about that. Got them in here. I like the way the uh, Mazada channels disperse the light. Not so hard on the eyes. Now let's test out the motion sensor. All right, the lights are going off. Walk in here. Well, Just that. like that, they come yeah. in. You're smoking, cool. baby. All right, guys, this part's all done. This guy, it'll be next, and this one. guys we're all done with the lighting installation i appreciate you watching if you have any questions or any comments pop that them down in the comment right section there. below and i'd appreciate it if you hit that right? like button subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos Cookies and i think after you do all that you should watch this video got 90% of the way done with this side. We got like a few pieces left. You can see that little sliver. And we are out of our butylene tape. So we need to run into town, get some more, and a few other things that we're gonna need to put in this cable system that we're gonna be putting in. By the time we get here, it's gonna be dark. We'll see you guys in the morning. town yesterday evening and got the things we needed so now we can finish this little triangle thing and then we will be pretty much done with this side and we can go ahead and put a chalk line down this long this length of this and rip that whole thing off so then it'll look like a normal shape it's all like crazy right now that's the best way to make it like a straight edge as soon as we get that done we're gonna start putting a railing on this long side right here make it just a little safer up here for the kids so excited to see what it's gonna look like i'm just gonna get to work and uh try to knock this out today Of you to give me a screw. <laughs> Are you ready for me to chalk it? Yeah, 
quest to find the perfect diffuser channel, I stumbled across another product that I may even be more excited about. Enter the Muzada Edgelit Frosted Acrylic Aluminum Panels. In this brief video, I'll unbox, set up, and show you a few more pictures and videos at the end. So each box comes with two panels that are each four feet in length. I'll slide the acrylic out of the profile so we can get a closer look at the design. Now the LED strip will slide in here and when the frosted diffuser sits on top, the light will illuminate the material and create a perfect glow throughout. Next, you can remove the protective material that's on both sides of the acrylic. So, like I said at the beginning of this video, Uzada is the sponsor of the, For the LED video. strips. They I'm going to be using some BTF lighting WS2812B pixels that have 100 LEDs per meter. These lights work perfect, and they're the ones I recommend using for this product. And to get the full smooth neon look, it is recommended to use something that has at least 90 LEDs per meter, which is why I'm using these instead of my usual ones that only have 60. Now since the panels are longer than the 1 meter length that the LED strips come in, I'm going to solder some together so everything matches. Now I like using my own 18 gauge silicone wires, so I'm going to be cutting off the first and last LED to get rid of the ones that they come with. So here's my finished strip. I soldered my own wires to the front and back, as well as added about 21 additional LEDs. I won't go over step by step on that process since I already made a how to solder video that you can watch that walks you through in great detail on what I just did. Now that our strip is ready, you can insert it into the channel at the bottom and feed it through to the end. Once the strip is in, you may be wondering how to get the adhesive off the back to make it stick. While it is possible to do, I recommend just leaving it on. The end results all look the same, and in my opinion, it's just not worth the time. Now all that's left to do is slide the diffuser in place. One thing I do want to mention is if you end up installing these somewhere that's going to typically be below eye level, make sure you flip the panels around from what you're seeing here so that the LEDs are on top shining down. 
And if you put them somewhere that will typically be above your eye level, have the LEDs at the bottom shining up like they're positioned now. As far as controlling the lights and getting everything hooked up, I'll be using WLED installed on an ESP32 board. I'll leave links in the description to a couple videos I previously made going over step by step how I get everything set up and connected in case you want to do it the same way. Now as you can see here, I did end up putting together a few more of these in the exact same way to have a little more fun when testing them out. So as far as I can tell, there's currently nothing else like well, this on Ricky Amazon, and even though they're advertised as a baseboard chim product, my mind is already thinking that endless ways I can incorporate them into future projects. The Please let me know if you have any questions at all, and I hope you enjoy the final pictures so, and videos. We'll have to take a drive late tonight. We're gonna go get that truck. Which means we need to get this wire in. It's just a spade bit. Oh. <laughs> crazy. These go on the ends because these little these guys go in the, on the end. Okay. So this is your whole arm. Okay. I gotta do that to these sides and then we can start holding the tape knife. Ooh la la. So on the end pieces you don't have to go all the way through? No, all the way we gotta we gotta bore it out a little bit more. In the last few years, RGB floor lamps have exploded under the scene, and I know there's already a ton of DIY videos out there, but I still really wanted to try coming up with something myself. And since I want to be able to shine the light at the wall, as well as at times have it face me, I'm going to go with a design that more closely resembles the smaller profile base of the popular Govi Lyra, versus the traditional V-shape that you've probably seen a lot of videos on already. So the first thing I had to decide on was what to use for a diffuser, and I ended up going with this V-channel from Zada. This one is one meter in length, but since you can also get this in two meter sections, I'll for sure be doing this project again once I get my hands on that size. Next, I had to come up with something for the base, and I ended up using one and a quarter inch square dolls that I'll be cutting into different lengths. Now as you can see, these pieces of wood are about the exact same size as the profiles, which is going to be perfect for getting everything secured and set up. So right now, I've already cut some of the squares into a few different lengths, and I'm just experimenting on different ways I might want to put them. And once I have a design that I like, I'm going to secure the pieces of wood together using just a little bit of your average wood glue. Here I'm going to take the diffuser and just line it up on top of one of the squares and make a mark at about a quarter of an inch bigger than where the line would be if I were tracing it. Next, I'll be adjusting my blade to 45 degrees and cutting off the corner section where the mark was made. And since this cut won't be visible when installed, you don't need it to look perfect, so you could very well go slow and just use a regular hand softy blade. Now that the three blocks have dried, it's time to get the aluminum diffuser added. And based on how tall you want the lamp to be, will determine where it gets secured. To attach the profile to the wood, all I'm going to be using is some super glue. And once applied, I just held things firmly in place for about one minute, and then I let things set for about an hour. So now I'm going to take that one piece of wood that we cut the corner off and butt it up right next to the bottom of the channel. I do want this piece of wood shorter than the other ones because this is where I'll eventually feed the wires out of. And hopefully you can see here that the gap in the wood should be just big enough so that the wires from the LED strip will be able to fit through. Now honestly, at this point, the profile will stay upright and you could be done with it if you wanted to. However, I'm going to add a few more blocks of wood to give it a little bit sturdier of a base and a little bit more character. And I really had to fight the urge to get carried away, but I was proud of myself and only added three more pieces. They sent all these tools too. For the lights, I'm going to be using some BTF SK6812 LEDs since these will have the individually addressable pixels that I want as well as a separate LED just for the whites. I've already soldered my own 18 gauge silicone wires to the strip and I won't go over that process since I already made a how to solder video that goes over the easy steps of what I just did with very close up footage and commentary that I highly recommend checking out if you're interested. And you certainly don't have to, but I'm going to use a little heat shrink tube to cover up the soldering points of the strip and to give the wires a little more reinforcement. So the next thing I'm going to do is look at the bottom of the base and I want to determine where the best spot might be for the wires to come out. And I'm going to make a few marks for potential places I think might be best, but I won't be doing anything further at the moment. I'm also going to use this mesh type cord concealer to tidy up the wires from the LED strip. I probably should have gone with a little bit bigger size, but they'll still do the trick. Now after giving it some thought, I think this little area right here is where I'm going to have the wires come out from under the base. And I didn't record this part, but I just used a little sander attached to a Dremel rotary tool to make the little groove. But you just as easily could have used a little saw or chisel for this step. Here I'm going to be feeding the wires through the little slot in the wood at the bottom of the tube. Once that's done, I'll be removing the sticky tape and securing the LED strip under the aluminum profile. And in case you're wondering, there's 60 LEDs on this strip. 
Now the last thing to do before going over power and controller is to attach the milky white diffuser cover to the profile. Now right here, it's a little hard to see, but this is where I use the little sander to make a small groove in the wood so that when this thing's sitting on the floor or a hard surface that the wire can come out but the base will still be flush with the surface. Cable all the way down. <laughs> For power, I'm going to use a 5 volt 10 amp supply and I've already cut off the like barrel plug at the end and exposed the positive and negative it. wires. And since there's not much room to work, I'm going to use an inline Wago connector to extend the wires a little bit so it's not so yeah, cluttered. Yeah, sunny over here. As far as controlling the lights, I'm using my standard WLED installed on an ESP32 board. I won't go over those steps since I already made a simple walkthrough video on how to get that installed that you can watch, and in the already mentioned soldering video, I go over how to attach the wires to the module like I have here. Next is the easy part. I'm using a 5 piece Wago connector and I'll be inserting the red voltage wire from the power source and the red voltage wire from the LED strip into two of the five openings. Then I'll use another 5 piece connector and do the same thing for the two black negative wires. Milo's over here. Now I'm just going to plug the red voltage wire from the ESP device into one of the remaining three slots on the connector and then I'll do the same for the white ground wire which will go into one of the three open slots that have the black wires in. And finally I'm using a three section Wago connector to put the green data lines together. So the reason I use Wago clips with more openings than needed is now if I want to make a second floor lamp, which I did, all I have to do is put the three wires from that LED strip into the appropriate remaining openings and I'll be good to go. So that about does it for this project. I hope you enjoy the final pictures and videos and as always let me know if you have any questions at all. Don't get me wrong, I love LifeX, I love Philips Hue, I have LifeX Z strips on my desk, I have Philips Hue bulbs in the living room, and they've been the single most reliable bulb I ever use. But at that price, boy, I bet you hear somebody in the past. a lot saying, of work to do. Is not always better, yeah. but, but we're getting boy, somewhere. We got this whole front piece done. Some money it is this. getting cold, the sun's going down. We're going to try to throw. use everything so we have in this box to create a today. custom we want to strip. We want to thank Musada for sponsoring today's video. Thank you so much for sending us the cables for the railing. If you guys are interested and you guys have a project you need railing for, go check the link in our description. Head down to the description section and check us out. So the thing is, if you're about to use this as one long continuous strip, you're definitely not going to need as much things as I have here right now, I want to cut them. I want to cut them. Thank you guys for following us. I definitely need a few more. First things first, power supply. You need this one, not optional. Hey, hey, hey. A 20 pack of these connectors to connect the strip to the wires. I, I, I guess it's optional. I like the skin on my fingers. I don't want to burn them off trying to solder this, but I guess it's up to you. I, uh, uh, yeah. The strips itself, the SK6. Hey everybody, today we're going to be building this huge 50 foot trellis out of stainless steel cable and IOX. I've partnered with Mazada for this video. I'm going to leave links to all the items I'm using in the video description. I'm using 1 8 inch cable MCS and 1 8 inch cable MCS I hooks that you see here, M6 hooks and I-term buckles, and they're all made from either 3 16th or 3 4th stainless steel. The term buckles also come with a couple of types of sleeves and thimbles to connect the cables. I've been really impressed with the build quality and finish of all the products, but I'll talk to you guys a little bit more later. My design has 16 I-hooks on each post, so I pre-drilled all the holes using a simple jig. I partially screwed all the eyeballs in my hand. Give me a little lazy with the wire management if it white. Nice. When I move out my parents' place, I'll buy this measuring tape because it seemed like a pretty material thing to do. Mature. Cut off the end of the LEDs, just make sure you cut it on one of the actual cut points. I then went back and used an Allen wrench inserted into my drill to drive them away. This saved a lot of time, I think it probably took about 4 to 5, maybe 6 hours from this entire project from start to finish. I'm going to go back to the 
reverse the drive connecting forward Connecting the first cable could have been a fun one, but you just insert the cable into the aluminum sleeve around the eye hook and add a thermal for using one. And you can just leave the crimper. You can use glee included cable clamp if you don't have a crimper. Although it's only $40. Here's a close-up from the documentation on how it should look if you're not using it for the whole thing. Just follow along and you'll be good. Plug it into your computer with a micro USB cable, open a browser and go to install.wl. And crimp it with the sleeve and then we'll insert it in the same way. This page right here, and once connect, you have the cable crimped, you come can up, click spin that right the center boom, of the turn buckle install, to tighten the cable. And now it's flashing, you could officially call yourself a nerd now, boy. And that is it, literally, it done. That was all the steps. Connect it to your Wi-Fi when this box pop up, I know you can't see anything that's going on on my screen, but I promise you it's that simple. Now a quick little test we could do to make sure everything's working, we can hit this power button right here, and you can see this LED turn off. Hit the power button again and on. Now we just need to connect the rest of LEDs to this. But before we do that, we have three wires, positive, negative, and positive. I timed it out, and, and after the first or second run, once you have a hang of it, it only really took me about three minutes per stretch, stretch of cable. The blank one is the ground. Cut the other end that we're going to connect to the little chip and do the same exact thing. I'll find these little breadboard wire things over here, just call them lying around. I should I mention this in the beginning, I'll leave it linked as well, but it'll make it real easy to connect things to the chip. Connect the power to the pin label VIN, connect the ground to the pin label GND, and connect the data to the pen label D4. I don't see, need a judgment right run, now. I connect it like just to test about. everything once it's working. I'll secure it properly. I'm going to speed Plug things up to 4x now. Life, so you know how long life. it takes. Yet. We're going to be fixing that now. Hit this config button. Hit LED preferences. Scroll down to where you see LED output and choose the LEDs that you have here. This is where I'll put SK6812. If you choose the other one, this is where you'll put it here as well. Right below that, you'll see a box label linked. Take out the default value. Put the amount of LEDs on your strip. Yes, you need to count the exact dots on your strip and, and put it in there. I want to hit save if everything went according into plan you should be in our gear if it didn't I, I don't know what to tell you there boy <laughs> now nah, leave a comment I, I, I try my best at this point if you didn't cut the leds you're done you could just use it as is but i about to pop the first segment here and then i'll cut the rest for the rest of cupboards here the problem though right, if so i just stick this on the cupboards i think this look at how looks looking. good but i decided i, I wanted to so have a, a more a vertical path for the place to climb <laughs> that's not sword so boy bro that's I actually from the sponsor this video musata this gonna allow me to put the leds in these little channels off camera i also trim down all the excess cable by each crimp so that it'll be a bit more tidy next year i'm gonna come back and do an look update like video to show you what it looks like once the lines come in, I think it's going to look really nice. I'll be curious to see how they grow the on the, the cables or if they can kind of span across those, those divides. Aluminum. Each one is 3 .3 feet As I said before, I've been really impressed quality. with the hardware from Mazada. It's all really high quality and there's and if you no to be finish this video, issues, no sharp edges, anything like that. I've actually purchased Mazada hardware before for previous projects, none of which have been into videos, but I've been really happy with that hardware as well. In total, this 50 foot run, no way it costs look like about $350 to $400, second US but your cost is yes, obviously going to vary depending on your design and every will be dramatically less if you are doing something Honestly, smaller. Honestly, just look how much more of a finished product that looking right, like. Thanks for watching and, and don't trip, forget to jump subscribe. Into the settings, and of course, I am a bit the behind on videos, as you're probably aware, but, are but I have quite a bit of footage from and various projects, including plan, building of this new house, if not, and I'm going to eventually make <laughs> just videos like that, for this first channel. Half of the kitchen, done. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, watch me just ignore the measuring tape I was raving about just the eyeball, this is why I'm here. <laughs> I thought everything was going good until tragedy hit. Alright, so we run into a small problem, boy dog. Um, I thought I could have run this through the cupboard because I thought I had a crack there with a lemon push it through and hide it but not working. So we just gonna run it with the wires visible for now and we'll figure out that wire management thing after. Alright, so right here is where things get a little sticky because under here we don't have much space now. In today's so episode, we'll walk through the process of measuring and planning out your measure and make sure I leave space for the clips so they can fit inside. Post. Hmm. Better Securing care, ignore the measurement tape this time. I just added some paint or tape on the actual point I'm going to cut. I, I, I don't know why I just feel like it'll make sense in my head. Adding top rails and we'll mix in tips and things I learned to hopefully help you install your rail system as smooth and efficiently as possible. We spend a lot Don't forget, of time once you add the LEDs, we need to replace the link with the new friends, number, hit save, and then we're the summer nights. Slap on the diffuser covers and wash them LED hotspots disappear, and, and now we just have one final step on redone. So up until now, we've been powering it through the micro USB port from the laptop, but it's time to wire the power supply in. It's simple, it's not difficult at all, so remember where you connect the positive and negative and data to the actual LEDs from the chip. You're just going to take the positive and negative from the power supply and splice it into that same positive and negative. 
you done, once you pause to plug plugged in, you can I've now remove the microUSB cable and it powered and directly from the wall. And you have access to a lot more power now. So in the settings where you see it's saying maximum current is 850 milliamps. It's really you want to change strong. that to 2000. I have a power supply that can do way more, but we just played it safe now. 2000, hit save and you see the LEDs bright now. So at the time I edit in this video, I've been using the lights for about 2 to 3 weeks. I have zero complaints, zero issues. It looks just the same as a light effect strip as a Philips strip. There's many to choose from. Even better, maybe even brighter. The white, super bright, accurate colors saturated. And on top of that, as you can see for yourself, when I change the colors or turn it on and off, it has a nice smooth feel, which you do get from most other LED strips. Which is, it's something that's super necessary to me. So I'm just gonna stop talking now. I'm gonna chill. I'm gonna just watch some of the effects that you can do, and you can judge for yourself if it's better than Philips Hue and my effects from the middle. To me, 100. It's been so long. The original baby gate is even here. <laughs> it's time for a remodel. Goodbye. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. My floors were the most ugly brown carpeting I could imagine and filthy. And my fireplace was this old fashioned 1972 used red brick. It needed to be modernized. So I did a simple repainting of my fireplace and I redid all of my hardwood floors to this really beautiful engineered wood planking to the color of my liking. Now that color really went well with the porcelain tile from my kitchen. And the crowning glory of my whole room is the Mazada railing. This stairway is Hello really guys and welcome back to Camex Petra. So Today in, we're going to be like reviewing and installing the Mazada Silver way. LED Channel System. That. When paired with a high density LED light, light, light strip, this channel can uh, produce a spotless effect. The channel system has lots of applications and there's plenty of places where you could install it. For us today, we're going to be installing it underneath our bar countertop. The last few weeks since we moved in, we've really been uh, renovating this bar area, trying to get it to look better. We started by staining the bar, and then we added a cool 3D brick on the back wall. And now next up, we're adding this light strip underneath the bar, which I think will add a lot to the uh, area. If you did want to install it outside, the system is waterproof, but for us, it's just going to be underneath the bar. So nothing to worry about the there. Form information I just filled out, and and like I mentioned before, products, you will want to really use helpful. a high but density light strip to achieve that spotless that an neon now, almost effect, Every which I think will look really cool when it's done. Or even the Overall, the channel system is very easy and simple to install. It has a set of brackets that you screw in to wherever you want the channel system to be. And then the channel system itself just snaps into these brackets. And then over that, you put the diffuser. So it's easy to put a light strip in and, and replace it even down the line. That was so amazing. That's for our application, we also had a set of online. corner brackets way, and corner uh, channel pieces that it came together. And it makes it real easy also to hide where the light strip kind of bends around the corner. And these uh, snap in perfectly. So once it's installed, it looks perfect. So like I mentioned before, we decided to put these underneath our bar countertop. But there are plenty of places you could put them, like cabinets, wardrobes, mirrors, anywhere really. And we're kind of thinking about where else we would want to have this effect in our house because Muzada did send a, a few extra channels to us to use. So definitely big thank you to Muzada for sponsoring this video and this DIY project that we have here. In the so yeah, if you're looking for a cool gift this holiday, maybe the Mazada channel system is something you'd want to consider if you're trying to spice up someone's game room or bar or whatever, really. To do the whole entire for those interested, we'll have a link rail. down in our Even description, which will take you directly railing, to the Mazada site where you can browse all their different channel systems available. Online consultation. They do they provide various length confused. of channel, so whatever your application is, I'm service, sure they have it. Which is what you want. As always, like thank you guys for watching really the video. I hope that the application was no interesting idea. to watch at least. Uh, if you're seeing the end result now, you can let me know what you think. I think it came out really cool. We're excited so to have a few different lighting effects in our bar and game room area. 
and eventually uh, the plan is to add a cool drop down projector in that corner so lots of cool content to come with that definitely keep an eye on the channel if you haven't already definitely subscribe so you don't miss our next video thank you guys for watching and have a good day Bye. In today's video, I'll go over how you can easily add some LED lights to transform your space from this to this without having to do any programming, splicing wires, soldering, or even putting any holes in your wall. So to start things out, I'll be using a couple products from Govi. The first one, which I have here, is their updated version of the M1 that supports Matter out of the box. This is a big deal for those that like to use different smart home applications. The Matter protocol has become the universal language that most smart home programs are adopting, so compatibility with what you're using and these lights should not be an issue. Now, I'll also be using a couple rolls of their original M1 that doesn't support Matter out of the box, but I do have an important update on this that I'll share at the end of the video, so make sure to stick around for that. The first thing I'll have to do is take down some of my previous projects to make room for this no one. And because Here's I'm always video. changing things up, I've gotten really good at making things as easy and non-destructive as possible to remove. This I'll leave links in the description to the videos I made for this DIY in. diffuser channel, the DIY well corner floor lamp, so and the silicone the neon tubing that's over on the left hand side in case you're interested in checking those out. Base of my floor. And then the wires were connected through. The posts themselves were just a measure. Now you could always just put the LED strips directly on your wall, but I personally think things look so much better when you're able to diffuse the lights to achieve a perfect and evenly lit neon glow. To achieve this effect, I'll be using some diffuser channels that I came across a while ago that would be perfect for this install. So this next step is completely optional since you could just butt two of these up against each other to make the corner turn here, but to give things a slightly more professional feel, I'll be cutting these at a 45 degree angle so that they'll line up flush with each other. I have done this many times before and I do recommend wrapping the part that will be cut with some painter's tape. Now you could just use a fine tooth hand saw for this cut, but if you have the tools you might as well use them, so I'll be using my miter saw for this step. I'll be adjusting things to a 45 degree angle and then making the cut. Handrail was installed so fast. It was secured against the wall. The brackets came with the handrail, and I custom linked my handrail for exactly And hopefully it comes across on camera, but you can see that they do line up nearly perfect next to each other, which is so going to allow the LED strip to travel from one wall to the next with no visible gap in light. And before moving on, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Aura. So this is me signing up for their free 14 day trial, and during the setup process, one of the many things they do is scan the internet for data brokers that have your personal information. These data brokers then make a fortune selling your information to spammers, scammers, and other entities that want to know more about you. Now, Aura was able to find 30 such instances of my personal information being in the hands of these companies. Then, with one click, Aura sends out a notice to have my information removed from their systems, which they are legally required to do when asked. Their all-in-one platform offers antivirus protection, credit monitoring, credit lock, financial transaction alerts, secure VPN, identity protection, parental controls, 24-7 US-based customer service, and much, much more. I'll leave a link in the description for you to start so your own free 14-day trial, so please make sure to wars. check them out. Thank this you all so exactly much, and now back the to the video. So once you have a design in mind, it's time to start on. attaching now the profiles to the wall. I've only had great experiences using these removable 3M sticky pads for this now step, and it's pretty much the only thing that I use now when putting up channels. Now you certainly could use the clips that the product comes with and drill things directly into your wall, but at least for me, I much prefer this option. Now this will obviously vary depending on your layout, but here's what I had in mind. I'm going to use the original M1 that's 5 meters in length, and that's going to run directly on top of the baseboard and then make the right turn and go behind the media console. This should use up the entire 5 meters for that strip. Then I'll attach another 5 meter M1 about a foot above the first one and have it run 2 meters on either side of the wall. And for this one I definitely could use the entire strip, but for the look I had in mind I'm only going to use 4 of the 5 meters so I'll be cutting out the last part. And finally I'll be using the updated M1 that supports matter and installing it above the second strip over here. And since the new M1 strip is 2 meters long it should fit perfectly in one of the 2 meter length diffuser channels. can be bulky and obstructive. Now this cable railing is minimalist and that works really well in an interior space. It's very modern. It makes the flow between my living area and that stairwell below and the wall behind with all the art really seamless. It makes this room look bigger with a sense of spaciousness that it really doesn't have because it's a really small room. This stairwell goes to another floor I have in my house. And it's now, if you haven't wing, done so already, so you can remove the milky white diffuser top so that we can so begin installing the LED strips. I wouldn't want them to fall. So right before now, putting the, the lights into the channels, you want to make sure you have an idea downstairs. of where you're going to plug so things in and plan accordingly. For example, right this part of the LED strip where the pins are sticking out is the beginning and where the controller and power will get attached. So I'm going to make sure that this will end up over here. I just use a stainless steel cleaner. Moving on to the next one, and this is where I'm only going to have the 4 meter length. So at the end, I'll just be cutting off the leftover section at one of the cut points, and make sure your lights are not plugged in during this step. 
And finally, the last long section, and this one's going to be pretty easy since it'll Liz be using the entire five meters. And accessories for railings. Next, Click I'm going to go ahead and reattach doors, all the diffuser covers. Or out. And for all orders over $500, they give a $15 discount. I'm Rebecca Brand. Thanks for watching this video. Now we can video. just start attaching the controllers and power and sources to the LED strips. Ring the bell to get notified of my next video, and let's keep making great recipes. Now I have rarely ever gone through the extra work of feeding wires in the walls. Instead, I usually just hide visible wires using some basic cable concealers. Glory. Here I'll cut out a small notch at the top railings. and then use some painter's the tape to attach. It's not See perfect, but again, unless you want to go behind the walls, it's about as good as you can get, definitely good enough for me. But let's say you don't have a media console or really anything else to help conceal things. I made a video recently on something you could do that Great looks better than just putting things on the open floor, floor in a pile also, that you can check out if interested. Projects. So now that everything's right officially set up, all we have to do is wait Welcome for nightfall to, to see North how things turned out. Now this right weekend, off the bat, I absolutely love how this looks with the different heights and staggered lengths. It completely transforms the feel of the room into something different and unique, and that's exactly what I was going for. So right now I'm going to open up the GoV app, and I already have the three strips connected and named bottom, middle, and top. And I know very recently there was a software update made available for the original M1 that's supposed to drastically improve the white level performance as well as adding a new DIY sound react option. And since the middle and bottom strips are both the original M1s, I'm going to first update only the bottom to see if I can really tell a difference in the accuracy of the whites. So right now I have the bottom strip on full brightness and the white slider is all the way to the right and I'm not sure how well this will come across on camera, but without yet comparing it to the middle strip, to the naked eye, it actually looks really good. Next, I'm going to go into the non-updated middle strip hey, and change back. that to white to see if we can so tell a difference when comparing the project, two. But we forgot one crucial tool that we'll need. So uh, without a doubt, I can clearly tell there's a difference, but what do you all think? To me, the middle strip has a slight but noticeable purple tint to the white color, while the bottom strip definitely looks more accurate. I also tried moving the sliders all the way to the left for the warm white option, and at least from what I'm seeing, I really can't tell a difference between the two in this scenario. Now the next thing I want to quickly go over, since we do have three controllers, and having to go into each one to make a change is not always what you're going to want to do. Instead, we can easily set these three up in a group to allow us to change all the lights at once. For this, go into the Home tab on the top left of your screen, scroll down to Groups, and then hit the plus icon. Then click Same Model Group Control, give things a name, and then add all three LED strips. You can now simultaneously make changes to all the lights versus having to do it one at a time. Moving on to the music updates, and Govia has always done a great job in the sound react category, but they've expanded on the functionality and have added a DIY mode. I played around with this for a little bit, and there's definitely so many ways you can tweak the animations to create something you love, which you can then save to access later, so make sure to check this out. <laughs> now as far as getting things connected with Matter, it's pretty straightforward. I'll be using my Echo Dot 5th Gen, which is one of the many devices that currently supports the protocol. First, go into your Alexa app, and then on the Devices tab, near the top right, click the plus icon. Then scroll all the way down to Other, and then choose Matter. It'll then ask you to scan the QR code, which can be found attached to the Govi controller right here. Once scanned, it'll have you connect to your home Wi-Fi, assign it to a room, and then you're good to go. Now the instructions do say to set up Matter within the first 15 minutes of turning things on for the first time, and if it doesn't connect, you'll want to reset the Govi controller by holding the power button in for 4 seconds and then hitting the button below it 4 times, which will do a factory reset and allow you to try pairing again. Now one last thing I did want to mention is that if you did purchase the original Govi M1 and now you're a little bit bummed that it doesn't support Matter, Govi said that via their website or app you'll be able to provide proof of purchase and they'll send out a free replacement controller for the original M1 that does support Matter. And I'm not entirely sure on the exact details of the promotion or how long it'll last, but hopefully it'll be an easy process to get the upgrade sent out. So that about does it for this video, but I'll leave you with some final pictures and videos of the setup in action for those of you who'd like to see a little bit more. Thank you all so much sides. for watching, and as always, I hope you have a blessed day. And changing out the ceiling fan finally to something that looks more along the lines of this one. And we have not replaced the carpet yet. Trust us, that's one of the big things we're going to be doing soon. Anyway, so, we're going to focus on that. But for now, we've got to work that out for a second. So. Things first. Ceiling fan. Gotta go. Bye. So this is.
So we've got number three out of three in this cabin. So we haven't shown you us taking apart the other two, so we're going to replace those. We like to say that these come out very easily, but they do not. So we're crossing our fingers that this one does, because the other ones have been not good at all. Oh, you can see the mountains. Oh, it's so pretty. Hey guys, welcome back to the project that you're watching. On today's project, we're going to be adding some lighting to our kitchen cabinets. Let's get started. So I'm going to be adding some lighting to our kitchen cabinets. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put some lights up on top. Oh, that's uh, to good. shine up on the ceiling. Next. This is more of an accent light. Ow. And then I have some LED I'm lights. Right We're going to put that underneath of the cabinet. And I'll be able to see what you're doing on the cabinet. We've got the uh, parts laid out here on the table that I'm going to be using. We've got LED strip lights. And these are going to be the under cabinet lights. And those have remote controls. They also have a sensor that will um, turn the lights on and off when it's, uh, turn them on when it's dark, turn them off when it gets light. And also they will do motion sensing. So if you walk into the kitchen, the lights automatically turn on. Uh, these are just some generic lights and I'm, I'm gonna be using up on top of the uh, cabinets just for an effect. I've already got one of those installed with the refrigerator. You see it just kind of shines out on the ceiling. And lastly, I uh, have these uh, covers for these strip lights. And uh, these are made by a company called Muzada. Uh, they are uh, aluminum. They can be bent uh, however you want to bend them if they need to go around something. They also have a flexible cover that disperses the light from the LEDs. As you know, these LED strips are rather ugly. And I don't think uh, I would want those just hanging around under the bottom of my cabinets by themselves because number one, uh, they're ugly. <laughs> and number two, the individual lights uh, create hot spots. When you look at them, you just see single lights. And what I hope to do with uh, these Mazada uh, channels is what they call them is to kind of disperse that light so that it kind of glows a little more rather than it's being so harsh all right so these channels are very useful and somebody's uh, got his if you're going to put up on. strip led <laughs> lights uh, you need these right, to make them look good so i want to thank mazada for providing these channels and uh these things are pretty cool so these lights will all have to be plugged in and uh I want to hide all that inside of the cabinet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside of here and I'm going to put in an outlet so that I can plug both the lights from the bottom and the lights from the top into that outlet. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a hole in the back and if you look right down below here. So there's that outlet and there's the cabinet. What I'm going to do is fish a, a cable from the bottom down here up into here, set the outlet in there. That'll give us a place to put those lights in. So you guys have seen me install plugs before. Uh, if not, hey. I'll leave a link to a video right here where I've done it. So I'm not gonna spend much time on it. I'll just go ahead and get these installed and then I'll come back whenever we get them. We're gonna start cutting seven more.
my plug changed out. Now, I don't know if you could tell from the video, but our house has these weird plugs. It is a double wide mobile home, so maybe that's a thing for double wides, I don't know. But anytime I take a plug out, I always put back right. in a standard into plug. A new project. I just think those Actually, are we're just continuing uh, the project that we didn't finish more yesterday. normal. So we're putting up the so fan. Anyway, we got in the new also got this so plug in. It will dangle like it's supposed to. Got a hole drilled up through my cabinet. Love the wiring. <laughs> I went through there. I think it goes with the ambiance. I think that's what we're going for. It comes out. <laughs> no, top right it. there. We're gonna do a little revision. So now I'm gonna hook this All right, here we go. light up and set it up here so we can have some light coming up from the top of the kit. out the spindles and we're gonna do the undersides of the railing and do the second coat and then we're gonna paint the theme across the top. All right, there we go. Out the space. Accent the lighting up on top of that. Yeah. To do it okay. we moved in here. <laughs> now for the LEDs. So we have to bring out that right, here's how these LEDs work. Uh, that thing weighs Give probably plug, 80 pounds. I don't know. Plugs into so the back of a sensor heavy, but it does the trick. and then the LEDs themselves I also plug in the sensor. It's painful. <clears throat> out here on the end of the LEDs. Let's get to work. Yes. To focus. There's also a plug. And then these LEDs on this row are in segments that will plug into those. So you can customize the length on these. Also, you can cut these. Uh, there's spaces that are labeled where you can cut those if you need to cut them to a certain length. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide where I want the sensor at. This sensor will allow these to come on and off when a person walks into the room. And we got some double-sided tape and we can kind of determine where we want it at. I'm thinking back here in the corner like that. All right, so we were gonna be painting. And I'll week. run a, drill a hole up in the back here, here, and that'll be right there by the plug. And you touch it here. And then I can and then it's what, a 20 foot plug drop? that in. Um, and then That's this end will go into the LEDs. And from here all the way across, I'm gonna put those Muzada channels and put the LEDs inside of that, and then they'll plug into this sensor also. This also comes with double-sided tape and some extensions to go between the LED segments if you need a segment without any light. All right, got this sensor mounted, hole in the back, and now I've got my cable coming down here that's going to my LEDs. And real quick, turn those on so you can see what they look like. Back off. Get on the really tall ladder in a thunderstorm. Yeah, exactly. Next, I'm going to cut my channel <laughs> all the way across and take two pieces, and I'm going to mount that. And I'm going to use uh, some double sided tape on them. All right, this channel and the covers. Thin enough that you can easily squirrely, cut this with but I think we're done. May have to straighten out the hinge where you cut it just a little oh my bit. God. Uh, I was but it's no big deal at all. My hands were clammy on that ladder. Oh my goodness, I'm glad I'm done. Props to Todd for getting on. I don't even know how tall how high up you were, but it was too dang tall. Look if we got it though.
Okay. Let's go ahead and pop them up and... Let's go ahead and... Oh. Hey, Wally. You're talking <laughs> to me. <laughs> hey, bud. We're done. Yay. <laughs> you're giving me... Oh, my goodness. You're giving me big kisses. Well, he says we're done, we're ready for happy hour, and we're going to go sit on the porch for a bit and relax. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't done that and turn your notifications on. Alright, got them in here. And don't forget to check out Todd and I like the way the uh, We've been channels as we go along, disperse so the light. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Not so hard on the eyes. Now let's test out the motion hey, sensor. Alright. The lights are going off. Aww, in here. Alright, thanks so. like See, See you next time. Bye. Pretty cool. Alright guys, this part's all done. This cabinet will be next. And then this one. guys we're all done with the lighting installation i appreciate you watching if you have any questions or any comments pop them down in the comment section below so first step in this project and i'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like railings. button and to do this, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos and, then, and i think after you do all that you should watch this video which with the saws on Repeat this process on both sides. And before actually installing the video, so at this point, it's time to actually order your railing. And I'm going with the Black Cool system from Rosada. And they actually reached out to me because they saw my back deck wire railing video, which I'll link there, which also used some of their products. So literally, all I did was send them a picture of the porch. Here's like the actual picture I sent them with a couple dimensions. They designed everything. They need the spreadsheet which has all the materials listed and also has links to each of the products online and they sent me everything to install which we're going to do right now so first things first we need to establish and mark the railing post locations and you want to do this using either a chalk line or a laser level as shown you want your post to be in a straight line it's as simple as that next we're looking to use the railing post on the concrete and one of the anchor bolt locations which will typically be four per post with a sharpie so you can see the location Perfectly level 
put so you can see if we put it there we're looking pretty level there and also on this side and once we have that we'll go ahead and tighten these guys down after confirming that the post is level you're going to now fully tighten your nuts and you want to do this gradually don't tighten one all the way down and then the next just kind of go uniformly and then turn off any of the excess shim using a utility knife to score along the post and then just snap off the excess repeat the railing post installation process for all of the rest of the posts needed for your project concrete expansion bolts are sticking up a little bit too high, you can use a reciprocating saw with a metal blade to trim all those flush with the knife. I did this for all the posts, unfortunately, and uh, I used a piece of cardboard to actually protect the post, and that's why. Clean off any of the metal shards, and then install the decorative post base cap, like you're seeing. Do this for all the posts. Next up, we're going to install the rail, and to do this, I'm first going to install this bracket that goes at the top of each post. The report's in the video description is the exact name of all of this hardware. I'll have it linked down below. Preliminarily tighten everything up, and then if you have a flat railing, you're going to use the flat bracket, and if you have a curved circular railing, you're going to use a circular. We have flat in this case, and we're going to go ahead and preliminarily get it installed there with the provided hardware. Now, it's finally time to install the railing, and to do this, I put it in place preliminarily, and I use some bar clamps to hold it in place while I got everything lined up and measured. So for my railing, I decided to make some rough cuts first. I marked at around 48 inches for the longer segment, and I'm going to go down to my lighter saw with the metal blade and cut that, just so I have two more manageable segments. Then I'm going to take the adapter clip that came with the railing to find my angle for this right here. So as you can see, I have it clipped in place. It's meeting up, obviously not the perfect angle. I'm checking the bottom bracket to make sure it's perfectly flush, and then I'm going to use my angle finder to find the angle between the flat section at the top segment and then the smaller segment both at the same angle. Depending on the quality of the saw blade you use, you might find some jagged edges on the railing and so clean that up In my quest to find the perfect diffuser channel, I stumbled across another product that I may even be more excited about. Enter the Muzada Edgelit Frosted Acrylic Aluminum Panels. In this brief video, I'll unbox, set up, and show you a few more pictures and videos at the end. So each box comes with two panels that are each four feet in length. I'll slide the acrylic out of the profile so we can get a closer look at the design. Now the LED strip will slide in here, and when the frosted diffuser sits on top, the light will illuminate the material and create a perfect glow throughout. Next, you can remove the protective material that's on both sides of the acrylic. Each bracket is going to attach your railing to the post board. You also want to pre-drill the holes so that you can bolt For the LED strips, I'm going to be using some BTF lighting WS2812B pixels that have 100 LEDs per meter. These lights work perfect, and they're the ones I recommend using for this product. And to get the full, smooth, neon look, it is recommended to use something that has at least 90 LEDs per meter, which is why I'm using these instead of my usual ones that only have 60. Now, since the panels are longer than the 1 meter length that the LED strips come in, I'm going to solder some together so everything matches. Now, I like using my own 18 gauge silicon wires, so I'm going to be cutting off the first and last LED to get rid of the ones that they come with. So here's my finished strip. I soldered my own wires to the front and back as well as added about 21 additional LEDs. I won't go over step by step on that process since I already made a how to solder video that you can watch that walks you through in great detail on what I just did. Now that our strip is ready, you can insert it into the channel at the bottom and feed it through to the end. It takes a little bit of time, but it's not too bad. After trimming off the jacket, Once the strip is in, you may be wondering how to get the adhesive off the back to make it stick. While it is possible to do, I recommend just leaving it on. The end results all look the same, and in my opinion, it's just not worth the time. Now all that's left to do is slide the diffuser in place. And repeat this 
process for all the cable you're going to need for your project. One thing I do want to mention is if you end up installing these somewhere that's going to typically be below eye level, make sure you flip the panels around from what you're seeing here so that the LEDs are on top shining down. And if you put them somewhere that will typically be above your eye level, have the LEDs at the bottom shining up like they're positioned now. As far as controlling the lights and getting everything hooked up, I'll be using WLED installed on an ESP32 board. I'll leave links in the description to a couple videos I previously made going over step by step how I get everything set up and connected in case you want to do it the same way. Now as you can see here, I did end up putting together a few more of these in the exact same way to have a little more fun when testing them out. So as far as I can tell, there's currently nothing else like this on Amazon, and even though they're advertised as a baseboard trim product, my mind is already thinking the endless ways I can incorporate them into future projects. Please let me know if you have any questions at all, and I hope you enjoy the final pictures and videos. This is a redundant process, so repeat this for all the cable in your project. After finishing up the flat section, we're going to move on to the stairs, and you're going to insert the inner terminal at the top of the stairway, make sure that it's secure, then you're going to trim off the vinyl coating and install the tension on the bottom. In the last few years, RGB floor lamps have exploded onto the scene, and I know there's already a ton of DIY videos out there, but I still really wanted to try coming up with something myself. And since I want to be able to shine the light at the wall, as well as at times have it face me, I'm going to go with the design that more closely resembles the smaller profile base of the popular Govi Lyra versus the traditional V-shape that you've probably seen a lot of videos on already. So the first thing I had to decide on was what to use for a diffuser, and I ended up going with this V-channel from Uzada. This one is 1 meter in length, but since you can also get this in 2 meter sections, I'll for sure be doing this project again once I get my hands on that size. Next, I had to come up with something for the base, and I ended up using one and a quarter inch square dolls that I'll be cutting into different lengths. Now as you can see, these pieces of wood are about the exact same size as the profiles, which is going to be perfect for getting everything secured and set up. So right now, I've already cut some of the squares into a few different lengths, and I'm just experimenting on different ways I might want to put them. And once I have a design that I like, I'm going to secure the pieces of wood together using just a little bit of your average wood glue. inside the house, so we're going to talk about how it's held up in the elements, some mistakes I made installing them, and repairs I've had to do since the installation. Here I'm going to take the diffuser and just line it up on top of one of the squares and make a mark at about a quarter of an inch bigger than where the line would be if I were tracing it. Next, I'll be adjusting my blade to 45 degrees and cutting off the corner section where the mark was made. And since this cut won't be visible when installed, you don't need it to look perfect so you could very well go slow and just use a regular handsaw if you'd like. Now that the three blocks have dried, it's time to get the aluminum diffuser added. And based on how tall you want the lamp to be, we'll determine where it gets secured. To attach the profile to the wood, all I'm going to be using is some super glue. And once applied, I just held things firmly in place for about one minute, and then I let things set for about an hour. So now I'm going to take that one piece of wood that we cut the corner off and butt it up right next to the bottom of the channel. I do want this piece of wood shorter than the other ones because this is where I'll eventually feed the wires out of. And hopefully you can see here that the gap in the wood should be just big enough so that the wires from the LED strip will be able to fit through. Now honestly, at this point, the profile will stay upright and you could be done with it if you wanted to. However, I'm going to add a few more blocks of wood to give it a little bit sturdier of a base and a little bit more character. And I really had to fight the urge to get carried away, but I was proud of myself and only added three more pieces. Pre-drill all the holes and make sure that all the hardware was set up before they would install the actual railing. For the lights, I'm going to be using some BTF SK6812 LEDs since these will have the individually addressable pixels that I want as well as a separate LED just for the whites. I've already soldered my own 18 gauge silicone wires to the strip and I won't go over that process since I already made a how-to solder video that goes over the easy steps of what I just did with very close up footage and commentary that I highly recommend checking out if you're interested. And you certainly don't have to, but I'm going to use a little heat shrink tube to cover up the soldering points at the strip and to give the wires a little more reinforcement. So the next thing I'm going to do is look at the bottom of the base and I want to determine where the best spot might be for the wires to come out. And I'm going to make a few marks for potential places I think might be best, but I won't be doing anything further at the moment. I'm also going to use this mesh type cord concealer to tidy up the wires from the LED strip. I probably should have gone with a little bit bigger size, but they'll still do the trick. Now after giving it some thought, I think this little area right here is where I'm going to have the wires come out from under the base. And I didn't record this part, but I just used a little sander attached to a Dremel rotary tool to make the little groove. But you just as easily could have used a little saw or chisel for this step. Here I'm going to be feeding the wires through the little slot in the wood at the bottom of the diffuser. 
And once that's done, I'll be removing the sticky tape and securing the LED strip under the aluminum profile. And in case you're wondering, there are 60 LEDs on this strip. Now the last thing to do before going over power and controller is to attach the milky white diffuser cover to the profile. Now right here, it's a little hard to see, but this is where I use the little sander to make a small groove in the wood so that when this thing's sitting on the floor or a hard surface that the wire can come out but the base will still be flush with the surface. And that way we still were not exceeding For power, I'm going to use a 5 volt 10 amp supply, and I've already cut off the barrel so plug at the end and exposed the positive and negative really wires. And since there's not much room to work, I'm going to use an inline Wago connector to extend the wires a little bit so it's not so cluttered. Code. Look at the, the 4 inch gap that I mentioned. And definitely, if you need to, put more cable in. As far as controlling the lights, I'm using my standard WLED installed on an ESP32 board. I won't go over those steps since I already made a simple walkthrough video on how to get that installed that you can watch, and in the already mentioned soldering video, I go over how to attach the wires to the module like I have here. Next is the easy part. I'm using a 5-piece Wago connector and I'll be inserting the red voltage wire from the power source and the red voltage wire from the LED strip into two of the five openings. Then I'll use another 5-piece connector and do the same thing for the two black negative wires. And just like we focused on for outside now I'm just going to plug the red voltage wire from the ESP the device into one of the remaining three slots in the connector, and then I'll do the same there. for the white ground sure wire, which will go into one of the three open slots through. that have the black wires no in. One slipping through. All right, and so finally, I'm using a three-section Wago connector to put the green data lines together. So the reason I use Wago clips with more openings than needed is now if I want to make a second floor lamp, which I did, all I have to do is put the three wires from that LED strip into the appropriate remaining openings and I'll be good to go. So that about does it for this project. I hope you enjoy the final pictures and videos, and as always, let me know if you have any questions at all. Don't get me wrong, I love Life X, I love Philips Hue, I have Life X Z strips on my desk, I have Philips Hue bulbs in the living room, and they've been the single most reliable bulb I ever use. But at that price, boy, I bet you hear somebody in the past say, hey, cheaper is not always better, but, well, if it is, might be saving some money after this video. Cheaper might be better. We're gonna try to use everything we have in this box to create a custom LED strip that we can use on the bottom of these covers right here, so we have some nice underglow. Now we get started, I don't even know why I do it, I just followed a bunch of tutorials here, so you can feel free to follow along with me, I'll leave everything below in the description, and we get started. So the thing is, if you're about to use this as one long continuous strip, you're definitely not going to need as much things as I have here right now, but I want to cut them up and make sure they fit under the covers, exact now boys, so... I definitely needed a few more things. First things first, power supply. You need this one, not optional. Hey, 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 a 20 pack of these connectors to connect the strip to the wires. I, I, I guess it's optional. I like the skin on my fingers. I don't want to blow them off trying to solder this, but I guess it's up to you. I, uh, uh, the strips itself, the SK6812, don't worry about the name, everything in the description. I personally went with it, although it's a little more expensive than the others because it have an individual LED for the white colors, which is some I needed because it's in the kitchen already. What the whites to be white and accurate now, boy. But I'll leave the both options in the description the oh, it's actually coming on a roll of five meters so, so more than likely you're gonna have some extra left over for the next project hopefully this little really thing you have a long name again esp8266 you don't need to know what that means you just need to know that it's very cheap one of these is somewhere between five to seven dollars and it's gonna be the brains of the entire operation and finally some wire to wire the whole thing now listen to me do burn down your house i personally went with this 22 gauge wire it worked for me i have zero issues no complaints and especially because it come in this roll of white i'll just leave past me to explain why 
manager in a white so it can be a little lazy with the wire management if it wipes mm. nice when i move up appearance place i buy this measuring tape because it seems like a pretty good thing to do it should cut off the end of the leds just make sure you cut it on one of the actual cut points now that we have the first like leds cut the size and figure it's a good time to tell you about the direction of arrows on the leds however you decide to cut these up on join the back you just need to make sure the arrows remain following the same direction when you jump in the car you don't play it and drive to reverse and reverse to drive forward backwards just make sure to follow the same direction connect the leds to the wires with the little clips here, it's really easy to use, just push the LED in one side, squeeze it, very hard, push the wires in the other side, squeeze it, very hard, done. Alright, it's time to put the software on this little chip thing, I know it's looking confusing, it kinda is, but it's also not at the same time, just just follow along and you'll be good. Plug it into your computer with a micro USB cable, open your browser and go to install.wled.net. You get it with this page right here, connect, you'll see install WLED come up, click that right there, boom, install, and now it's flashing, you could officially you call yourself on it now boy. And that is it literally it done. That was all the steps. Connect it to your Wi-Fi when this box pop up. I know you can't see anything that's going on on my screen, but I promise you that simple. Now a quick little test we could do to make sure everything working. We can hit this power button right here and you can see this LED turn off. Hit the power button again and it off. Now we just need to connect the rest of the LEDs. Good morning and welcome back to our property up here in Southern Utah. Thank you since you picked up the, the, the camera. We have been working away on this deck, trying to stay warm, but I think it looks really good. We're all the way past the door now. We just got a little bit left to do before this side is completed. And then we can start on the railing on this side and get this side completely done. And then we'll continue over to that side. But that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Muzada. They sent us over all the railing cables for our deck. I'm excited to do that because I like the cable railing right system now, it doesn't like block the view out the deck we have awesome views so having just little cables light saves light the view light anyway light. it's yes. cold it's time to let hit the tools warm me up so i'm gonna get to work right below that you'll see a box table link take out the default value put the amount of leds on your strip yes you need to count the exact dots on your strip beautiful babe I want to hit you, if you went according to plan, you should be in a game. If you didn't, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> now, leave a comment on that. Try my best. At this point, if you didn't cut the LEDs, you're done. You just use it as it. But I about to the first segment here, then I'll cut the rest for the rest of the cupboards. Here's the problem though. If I just stick this under the cupboards, look at how I look at it. I am so angry, dog. I have to take a break and go and unbox it. <laughs> that's my sword boy bro, that's actually from this point, so this video moves out, huh? This gonna allow me to put the LEDs in these little channels, then put the diffuser over it, so it'll literally soften the look of the LED, and just make it look polished, smooth, and just, just good to look at. This is what the LEDs will look like with all the cuts, but like, we don't want that, but as I slide on the cover for the diffuser, you can see just how much of a difference it makes. The exact set I have here is a six pack of these U-shaped channels, made of aluminum, each one is 3.3 feet in length, Super good quality, I couldn't recommend it anymore, it's really and truly a game changer for any LED project. And if you happen to be watching this video thinking to yourself, you know what, maybe I should check it out, you know. Well, Muzata thought ahead, the link below in the description will give you 10% of the normal pricing. So Muzata, I appreciate how you're sponsoring this video, honestly. Thank God, boy, because we both know what it will look like without it. First one finish, second one now. Yes, this is the third, before I keep a count of every LED I was adding to the show. Honestly, just look how much more of a finished product that looking like home. Connect it to the first strip, drop it to the LED settings, and of course, remove the number that you had before and put the current number that you have to have a new strip. It's safe, and once everything went according to plan, you should be in a game. If not, I'm just like that, the first half of the is done. We take two days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, watch me just ignore the measuring tape was raving about so just the eye that... right here. I thought everything was going good until really? the ice pack, so we run into that a small problem. That is brand new. That just barely happened. We have bicycles on our house right now. Push it through and hide it, but no looking. So it just got a lot longer than I want it to because now that we have a railing here and a post here and a post there, I only get like two or three boards before I have to measure and cut. So right here, everything's got a little sticky. 